Why do single player games feel so different from multiplayer games? What is it about sitting down with a well made single player game that you just don't get with a multiplayer game? To answer that question, we first have to look at the fabled multiplayer games. One of the first things I did when writing the script for this video was ask a bunch of my friends and fellow gaming nerds what it is they like about multiplayer games and single player games, but we'll get into that later. When asked why people like multiplayer games, there seem to be two big reasons, spending time with your friends and being competitive. For simplicity, I'm going to get into each of them separately, but that's not to say that they're mutually exclusive. The time with friends or goofing around category. Games I would say that fit into this are games like Content Warning and Minecraft. Content Warning is a perfect example of this. The basic premise is you and your mates go into a haunted place and make YouTube videos. As you could probably guess, this makes for some perfect goofing around experiences. As everyone knows, messing around and making terrible jokes with your friends is a lot of fun. And games like this are a perfect medium to do that. Yeah. That's the thing with this category of games. It's not so much the game, and more who you play it with. Would you rather spend time joking around with your friends, or joking around with strangers? I bet most of you just answered your friends. And the same goes for games like Content Warning. You like doing things with your friends because of your friends. Same goes for Minecraft. I cannot tell you how many hours I have lost to just talking with my friends as we parkour around our respective builds. It's times like that that I realise it has nothing to do with the game. It's all about the interaction with the people. Now, for the other side of multiplayer games, we have the competitive category. Games that fit into this category are games like Valorant and Guilty Gear Strive. Now, I absolutely adore Guilty Gear. Does that mean I'm good at it? No, no I'm not, but I love it nonetheless. Something about the feeling of beating the shit out of your friends and other players online is great. I press buttons, I win, I get happy chemicals. Yippee! But that's just it. Winning. Winning feels so good. Especially when it comes to things you have put a lot of time into getting better at. It's the feeling of beating other real people. People who you know trying to beat you and knowing that you are just better or at least that you played better being able to hold it over the enemy that you just destroyed them same goes for valorant holy mother of god i have played a lot of valorant now i don't play competitive anymore because it makes me want to cry but i used to and i know that nothing felt as good as winning a competitive game and ranking up knowing that you're better than other people. But there is nothing more soul-destroying, more dream-crushing, more painfully mind-numbing than that godforsaken demoted screen. Because the same goes for losing as it does for winning. There is another player, just like you, behind the reason you lost. You have to sit there with the knowledge that you suck. And that's what led me to play more single player games. Single player games don't have either of those things, or at least not in the same ways. One of the answers that stuck with me for why people play single player games is escapism. In fact, most of the people I asked about why they liked single player games said, in some way or another, that it was because of escapism. Or as one of my friends put it, to avoid the crippling weight of everyday life stress. The thing with multiplayer games is that the escapism there come from the people you're playing with or against. In single player games, unless you're speedrunning, there is no one to beat, no one to impress, no one to share your experiences with, but you. It's just you and the game. But that's the thing, single player games don't have to worry about all the things multiplayer games do, because they don't have other players. They have less limitations. But for them to still be fun, their worlds have to be believable and the gameplay has to be enjoyable. This is the part where I talk about the game that finally made me make this video. A short hike. For those of you who haven't played a short hike, you play as a bird called Claire, who is staying with her aunt and waiting for a phone call. The only issue is that there is no signal, so you have to go and climb Hawk Peak. You see, the actual gameplay alone isn't what makes this game so good. 
It's the storytelling and world building. This game doesn't really tell you what's going on or what to do beyond go climb that mountain, nerd. It's a great example of storytelling through gameplay. You're not just spoon fed everything that's going on like some pyro live slot video. Just kidding pyro, love you. Mwah. You have to kind of figure it out by talking to people. While this game features only talking animals, it still feels real. All of the characters feel like actual people and the island feels like a place that could exist. Because every interaction, while sometimes a little fourth wall breaky, feels like actual people talking. You don't feel alone, except when the game wants you to feel alone. Everything feels so lively and communal. The adverse to this is Fallout. For the purpose of this essay, I'm only going to be talking about Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4. No, Fallout is an odd one, because it's really good at making you feel alone, afraid, and out of your depth. So much of this game is spent by yourself, traveling from place to place with nothing but the company of the big iron on your hip and the radio on your pit boy. Now I'm fully aware that you can get companions in Fallout, but even with the companions, it's less like a friend and more like a bodyguard. You may not be alone, but you're still lonely. Most of the NPCs you meet feel like people. They have a soul. It's not like GTA where you can go and kill whoever you want and not feel bad about it. These people, just like you, are trying to get by in the wasteland. They are trying to survive by whatever means possible. A good game should be able to make you as a player feel things, especially negative things. Take the Fallout New Vegas mission where you have to clear out the Repcon facility of all the ghouls, for example. While there are friendly NPCs in the facility, and it is totally safe once you've cleared out the enemies, even after clearing out all the enemies, I still felt uneasy walking through the skeletal husk of this decrepit old building. Or for another example, take the intro segment to Fallout 4. The whole vault feels empty. You feel alone and unsafe. The only visible life in the vault immediately tries to kill you, and all other signs of life seem to have vanished a long time ago. You feel alone. Because single player games, or at least the memorable ones, make you feel something. But that's just it. Because when it comes to single player games, it's the games themselves that make you feel things, not the people you play them with. Because all you've got is your shadow, your echo, and you. And that's why single player games feel like that. It all comes from the emotion invoked in you by the title you're playing. I've been Penny Like a Coin, and this was why single player games feel like that. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, and uh, here's the bloopers. Most of the NPCs you... <sighs> this game doesn't really tell you what's going on, or what to be... <coughs> For simplicity, I'm going to get into the... Fuck. That's the thing with... Fuck. Because every interaction... Where, where am I? What?